Um, I think I am all set. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Fable. Oh. oh. Nobody's uh, barking. <laughs> I'll start. <laughs> Welcome to Fable Table, an actual play live stream focused on critical world building, collaborative storytelling, my voice cracking, my dog barking, and finding the fun in games. Uh, we are continuing our game of The Wild Sea by Felix Isaacs. Um, and joining me today are Andy, Brian, Shannon, and Travis. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hello. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. It's been a no, good but, week. Uh, is Felix someone, Isaac's someone related? Someone is knocking at my door, so one moment. You all hang out with stream. <laughs> do, we <laughs> think that Felix, do we think that Felix Isaacs is related to Jason Isaacs, the actor who portrayed Lucius Malfoy? Yes. Headcanon says yes. Just literally for no reason at all? Do we just assume that? Okay, great. I think we should moving forward, unless proven otherwise. Yep, this is the this is the uh, a, a Malfoy family product. Wild Sea. <laughs> yes. There's so how is Mal everybody's week? Until proven otherwise. Oh Pretty God. Pretty good. Work, work is yeah. le poop. How do you say, mm. how do you say the shit? Um, le le, le, le <laughs> merd. In a in a bad way, you mean, right? Yeah, no, I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> I just keep waiting. Some people say this is the shit. Someone win the lottery, but... but none of us do. So I guess I just have to keep working like an animal. My so... uh, ex neighbors are here to pick something up. I did not know they were coming. Um, okay. uh, if if you were in the middle of something, please continue. But otherwise, um, you all are uh, comfortably sailing back <laughs> to um, a nearby settlement. Um, which I actually didn't come up with a name for. Um, something's rest. Uh, so come up with a name and, um, yeah, feel free to have some conversation about that crazy interaction with the pinwolves that just happened. And I will be right back. Um, <laughs> Bill would definitely call this place Spoon's Rest, as in a, uh, uh, the thing yep. you would nest your cooking spoon on next to your stove. Um, just saying. Or ladles rest. Yeah, ladles. that would be. Ooh, ooh, ladles rest. That ladles nice... rest sounds better than spoons rest. I kind of yeah, like that. Definitely. I'm into Done. it. I love it. <laughs> Easy. Um, how's everyone doing after a fight with the pinwolves? No one got super injured, right? I got a little roughed up trying to uh, rescue our friend here. Oh, but... that's right. You got you got dragged through the thorns and stuff. Um. He just he, didn't. He wanted to die, but I. That yeah. wasn't in the cards for him that day. <laughs> he didn't so. want to nah. die. He, I feel he, like he. That's did. exactly like he didn't want to die, so he didn't want to get on the ship. <laughs> well, I mean, look at it this way: the ship just got wrecked by Leviathan. You're running at him. You're like, "I'm coming to save you!" At full volume and at full speed. Yep. There's <laughs> yeah. no reason why that should cause panic or concern or worry or at least caution. You get it. Exactly. Yeah. Arms open. Jump in. Let go, little guy. Come on. Mm. <laughs> anyway, that's all. No, I think I got a little roughed up from that. But other than that. Yeah, I don't think I actually took any energies. Uh, just exhausted from a mm. harrowing experience of being exposed on the branches knowing that there's a leviathan that just ate a lot of uh your home basically <laughs> yeah for that voyage anyway but you got some <laughs> survivor homies on board with you so nice yeah I think prickles is down at the bowels of the ship checking on the eldritch being that calls our ship home Move again, checking on the tentacles, making sure that none of them are injured, maybe taking some flowers from his person and rubbing them together with some dirt and just trying to use it as kind of like a little balm in any place that gets scratched or just or wrecked or hurt. Feel like Dill takes care of the ship and the galley. 
And Prickles takes care of takes care of the Eldritch being. I like that. Oh, too cute. Um I was gonna say, I thought like when we had so so I didn't did we get any salvage from their wreck? This was the thing that I oh, wasn't. Oh yes, this sure is about. what we I needed to prepare and and get ready for <laughs> exactly. Because uh, as I recall, we were like, <laughs> you know me, I like, I like the stuff. I so. like the stuff. Yes, let me. So, do we need to hold on another conversation while you step away for another few minutes, or? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're good. Um, yeah, I think that um, things um, kind of settle down after a little bit of uh, raucous exuberance celebrating the fact that y'all fended off all of these pin wolves, like dozens of them. Um, they, you know, were numerous and savage, but they're dumb beasts. And uh, Prickles... Uh, brilliant plan to just crush them with all the tentacles of the ship by just having the ship kind of like flip in on itself and smack them on the deck was was really really good um but i think that um once y'all kind of like wind down and and get to work on the salvage i think um it's really interesting because here you are with all of these cosmer and you're salvaging their ship. And that is, I think salvage is a very normal part of this world and about, uh, about a part of being a wild sailor. Um, and there's some interesting norms uh, around uh, salvaging. Normally, whoever gets there first uh, in most areas get to lay claim to that salvage and kind of have like a gentleman's agreement um, of, of like any new land that arrives uh, or any salvage that they find, anything of interest. Usually it's whoever gets there first gets to lay claim. Um, and here you are with the prior owners who you've saved and it's fine. Like it's, it's a thing. They're like, great. Uh, some of this salvage is our stuff. We'll take what we can. If there's other stuff, like they're just happy to be alive and have been rescued. So, yeah. There is kind of like an unspoken agreement that at some point there will be a, a departure as the people will um, leave the ship at some point, uh, take what they want with them, and then leave also a lot of valuables. The specifics might be a, a, a source of tension later um, if there is things that both kind of groups want. Um, but that is something that often gets left for later. Um, so let's decide what kind of stuff they have. Um, let me look through the book here to see what kinds of resources, um, they would provide. Um, let me Imagine see. that in the case of salvage, like most of the time they're already dead by the time we get there. So yeah. we're not really having to fight people for shit that they still want. And if they're not dead, then they're our enemies and then we kill them and then they are dead and we take their stuff. But in this case, I don't really want to take something uh-huh. that means something to another person that okay. is still breathing. Right. It's just yeah. Me. Um, let me see if there is a, like, a resource on salvage here in the book. Um, I bet the Cosmer have some really interesting stuff, though. And I'm curious, Travis, if you have any input. Um. No. No. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot no, of No, the... they, they definitely... I mean, they're from the Satellite City, right? And, yeah, up in the air. Uh, uh, we said this is... Like, we were all Cosmer on this ship. This was a Cosmer ship, right? Correct. And I think what that would mean is that most of them are ardent, but not necessarily all of them are. Um... Yeah, there is no good list here. So I think some things that we would find would just be things like driftwood, 
Um, there would be some light metals. Uh, there would be probably a lot of like Cosmer specific personal effects, things like clothing, masks, uh, weapons. Um, yeah. Um, that they would probably begin to put in a pile for themselves. But I think like a lot of like the ship related stuff, like driftwood, light metals, uh, I'll say like engine cogs. Um, some sort of like um, rations would be in there. Uh, probably slightly better than the hard tack that uh, Dill made. <laughs> and shoved in their mouth. <laughs> um, calories are calories. Calories are calories. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's and, just math. Yeah. And then the <laughs> other thing that they'll now have in excess that they'll probably not care if you grab would be things like, um, I'm just going to say like squirrel suits. These are oh, people yeah. that are used to like using the air and wind um as a resource um particularly in the sense of flying to get from like flying island to flying island using the drafts up above so those may come in handy at some point they might not um there'd probably be some frayed ropes there's uh there are some masks uh that are like recovered uh, from people that didn't make it, like didn't make the initial Leviathan attack. Uh, I don't think we, did we lose? We lost like four Cosmer, I think, in that yes. total encounter, which like in the, good in the, work. Yeah, in the, in the encounter we saw, but many died before that, so. Yeah, before that, right. And I think there's like a, I don't know what the ritual or procedural procedure is or what it looks like once those masks are brought back home, but I think it's very deliberate. Like there's Cosmer that have like one or two masks of people that meant something to them, like siblings or other crewmates. And they're like, they have the masks. Like there's no mask that's going to be an extra in this mm. case. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Um, Can I have a quick scene, Nick? Yes, please. I think I would at some point gravitate up looking at all the salvage on the deck and I would go find Amber and walk over. Kind of like look at you, <laughs> motion this way, and then I'm going to start picking through the salvage and handing you things. Things okay. that I think might be useful to perhaps repair our harpoon turret. Oh, heck yeah. On the side of the ship. And awesome. then after I've handed you a bunch of stuff, I'll pick up some stuff as well and walk over and be like, you think you could do something with this? This would have been useful against those wolves. Yes. Uh, we can definitely use some of this scrap um, to, to salvage. Um, the harpoon gun, but more than that, I think we can also use it to maybe outfit um, our ship to make it a little bit more secure. Uh, mm. So, and I don't, I don't know what the Cosmer ship looks like. Are we dealing with like, is it metal? Is there canvas? Is it wood? Is it? Um, um, it's probably like this would be a ship that they built and or you know commissioned to be built down here on the surface like they they do not like have ships that go up and down there might be like a single flying ship that the cosmerius which are their um theocratic leaders use um but that's about it um they have ways of getting up and down, usually using um, iron shanks, which are the trees that are like even miles taller than all of these trees, like absolute massive, like world tree uh, height, but very mm -hmm. narrow. Um, so one way that I could see Cosmer getting back up is like um, climbing one of those and then deploying like a glider 
um, or you're squirrel suiting and catching a draft up uh, okay. or, yeah. or, or over. Think think your. Um, um, I think any flight that's attainable by like the citizens of the Cosmer or whatever, it's like personal flight, like a vehicle mm -hmm. for one person that goes a short distance right. kind of stuff. And of course, the Mothrin would are their own <laughs> flight sort yeah. of flight. Their own animal. Yeah. So the Mothrin are actually probably more numerous, along with the Ardent, uh, in that population. Um. Anyway. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but this vessel, which I was just looking for the name of, and uh, Travis gave it to me last week. Um. Oh, the giant's fang, uh, and then that little um um. What what do you call that? Mar Marion. Not marionette. What am I thinking of? A vignette. Figurehead? Vignette. Uh, in, in the little vignette at the start of last episode, oh. we, we saw that that yeah. ship um, had had its name recently painted over um, and is called the Giant's Fang. Uh, you may, in your search, maybe come across the splintered wood of, of the name of the ship <laughs> laying somewhere, or maybe it's sunk. Um, but... All the same, I am going to need um, a roll from y'all to kind of scavenge okay. and loot. Um, I definitely want to look for weapons if that is a thing that sure. they had on board, which you would have to imagine that if they're if it's a research vessel. It is, and I, I did. Everyone else roll. Else. My dice are downstairs. So I'll be right back. Sure. Okay. I also mm. did describe that, like, in militaristic fashion, out, they were taking, like, weapons out of lockers and handing them to people. Mm -hmm. So there are probably uh, a significant number of weapons out and about. It's just going to be a matter of, like, can you find them? Like, any of them that... Because they, though, like, smaller things, like handheld items or something that would be on a person are more likely to fall through the foliage yeah. And, yeah. and go into the sink. Um, we're luckier to find a locker that had weapons left in it, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Or attached yeah. to a piece that's, of ship. That's what I'm thinking I, we would need to find. Um, yeah. And something that's not helping the the search for salvage is it was a stealth hunting ship. So <laughs> they're... <laughs> there's like... Uh, probably some anything. camouflage aspects to parts of it, so... Yeah. Okay. Um, so <laughs> who would like to lead this role? Well, okay. I feel like Shannon asked for the salvage, so she needs to lead the role. we yeah. got to figure out what she needs to roll, though, a and how Amber, we can help her. Amber is also a dredger, which is like, this is their jam, is scavenging mm. things. And, yeah. Um, salvaging. Um, I think scout scavenge is the correct skill here, Shannon. A skill of searching, yeah. spit and polish. Uh, use scavenge to root out valuable salvage from dross to pick treasure from trash. That is exactly right. Uh, so now it's a matter of like, what edge do you want to use, and do you have any aspects that you want to use, or or anything else for um, um advantage? An advantage. Yeah, I'd like to use grace. Um, which is precision, uh, elegance, and quality. Mm -hmm. And then um, I don't know if my my spider puppy can help in this instance or not. I think the Cosmer can should be like an advantage because they they it, it was their ship. They can recognize yeah. it mm -hmm. among the the leaves and stuff. That makes okay. sense to me. Um, they know exactly they're, like they're, what to look for. Right, and yeah. we're all still around. We're probably helping out with this because mm -hmm. yeah. we, we want to help scavenge too. Combine, clearly. combine that with the fact that your ship has a lens room of telescopes and ocular magnifiers offering a commanding view. There could be people like finding the really valuable stuff yeah. and and pointing it out. Uh, it's yeah. just going to be to pick it up too. So if if we're doing this like the next day like after salt has like slept probably a lot uh he, that's probably where he would be uh helping cuz he's 
Um, good with observation equipment. And he I knows what to look for. I don't think the captain is necessarily eager to stick around, especially yeah, okay. like with the fact that the tentacular is kind of overworked right now. Yeah. And Salt um, is probably still sleeping. Sure. Passed out on the deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. bet a, a lot of the, the Cosmer are. Um, I think a, uh, half the Cosmer are probably helping out with this, and half the Cosmer are trying to like um, get the pile of um, pin wolves off the deck and into yeah. storage yeah. Yeah. for processing later. Because uh, they're you're not going to have time to disassemble all those bodies anyway um so yeah uh grace is uh is one edge uh for or an edge for one die two for bloom scavenge and then um yeah take take two advantages here um with the uh the, all the cosmer and the lens room so five die five die Damn. nice okay well, I five rolls. Any cut? Uh, cool. Spotting right. it is going to be easy as hell. I think recovering it is the challenge because it is a reef. And r the, the game defines reefs as a collection of junk, usually mechanical in nature, either on top of or just below the leafy waves. Reefs are hazardous to ship holes, but extremely sought after regardless, even hot spots for salvage operations. But it isn't just wild sailors that seek out reefs. Complex ecosystems grow around them. Unique interplays of predator and prey that can make them particularly dangerous and lucrative to explore. So I think the the um, challenge is going to be in recovering, not necessarily in finding. So um, the armor of the ship is already damaged from previous mm -hmm. attempts to get in and interpose the ship between the wolves and your um, the Cosmer. Um, so the captain who is at the helm is really nervous about this. Uh, and is giving you a bit of grief um, and, and taking a lot of precautions and is willing to just let salvage go if it means protecting the ship. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so it's, it is still going to be risky, though. So one cut. Okay. I've got... A six, a six, a five, a four, and a one. That's a good roll. So with a cut of one, one we reduce the top six. six. So six, five, four, one. No twist. Uh, we have twists when we roll doubles. Uh, yeah, you're able to get in. There is going to be a weapons locker that y'all are able to recover. Um, so let's take a look at the ship sheet and see nice. if there is um, some sort of um, weapon. Ship sheet. Yeah. I'm going to pull out my ream of notes. Let's see here. There's like all this whole long list of stuff. Mm. There is two things on the ship sheet that say a limited armory rack which is a collection of blunt keen and spike weapons or a wreckers armory rack a collection of hewing serrated and blast weapons yeah we're gonna take the limited armory rack yeah that sounds better and how, what was the descriptor for that um i only have what i've written down here but oh. essentially it's a collection of blunt keen and spike weapons essentially it's a closet full of blades Blades and spears and knives, essentially. Okay. Awesome. Um, they, I did describe them as having some guns, but they probably uh, issued all of those out. Um, they probably want to keep those. Yeah, and and they're gonna want to keep them. Yeah. Okay. Still managed to get some weapons as well as the driftwood, light metals, engine cogs, frayed ropes, rations, and squirrel suits. So, um, Captain Soliday uh, is eager to get things going uh, and get back to um, your your local establishment, uh, your local um, 
port. Um, so Which we've named the Ladle's Rest. Ladle's yeah. Rest. Okay, I like that. Um, okay, so in the Fox Lofts, there are um, the the seven major settlements. They are known as the Seven Towers. For this area, it seems to be the center of the metropolis that used to exist on this planet. This is, this is in fact, kind of the ground zero for the Verdancy. Um, and so it has the greatest concentration of um, buildings, um, like skyscrapers from the old world. Uh, and there are seven of them, at least right now, that um, stick out of the sea. Um, they're huge constructions of iron and stone. Um, others will get revealed at times uh, by root quakes and other canopy cutting efforts. But these seven in particular are like the, the ones that stick around. Um, and um, what did you all call it? Ladle's Rest. Ladle's um, Rest. Yes. Yeah, is the one that you all enjoy the most. Um, some of the other ones have some really strange people and aren't necessarily the most welcoming. Uh, but most importantly, Ladle's Rest is the closest to you all. Um, usually you'll see like maybe a dozen or so floors sticking up out of the sea um, that are just kind of exposed. Like the, the wall of the building is at least on one or two sides, completely um, cracked away. And then there's just going to be lots of like tents and shacks on these exposed floors of, of sci-fi corporate buildings. Um, and uh, yeah, they oftentimes have ports that are built out from them um, with these huge kind of docks that'll go up into them. Um, yeah, it's been a while since you all have been back to a port. Um, it's been at least a week. Um, so you are going to head back out. Um, so we are going to, I think, presume that you all have been on a journey, which is a mechanic of this game. Uh, when you go from point A to point B, there are some rules about uh, en engaging with like departure and um, the journey along the way. And I'm just gonna say we are on the last leg of this journey, so we can just dive right into the roles. Um, okay. So um, the there are a couple of key actions, and this is all on the uh, rules tab, the far right image, uh, our journeys. And I'm gonna bring this up for the chat here. Let's see if I can do this without screwing up the cams. Perfect. Okay. I just realized I forgot my dice. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gonna need those. I just realized my beer is empty. I'll be right back too. Oh no. <laughs> Anyone else? I'm, I might as well pour a drink while I'm here. Snack break. Snack break. <laughs> Quick snacky break. Thing that I ate before the stream like an idiot. <laughs> Should have waited. <laughs> Should have, could have, would have. This was the mistake. So I, uh, my, my family, you know, I'm visiting my family, and they made dinner plans tonight. And I was like, "Yeah, I'll do that," and then come back and do the game. And so it's uh, it's nine uh nine sixteen here, and I'm like full and very ready to go to bed. So forgive Aww. me if I'm a little slow tonight. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, That's okay. It's all good. I'm right there with you. I've been up till like two in the oh, morning. Yeah, you're past you're even la you're later than I am. So uh, you know. It's been a good week. I've had multiple races from my randomizer tournament, and I knocked out the great Ness Cardinality last night. Ooh. So, nice. is this a bracket or just kind of round robin? Or it's a bracket. I am now in the round of eight. Woo! Nice. Kind of waiting on my opponents who are playing right now. Actually, I'll have to catch the video tomorrow. Nice. A lot of fun though. Can we just feed the parts of the pin wolves to the ship that we don't want to eat? Absolutely. Here's the thing, though. Um, a big part of this setting and system is like the specialized skill of people that are like that work with meat. 
uh, and and like cut them up and stuff. And in fact, <laughs> one of the connections I, I gave you an option to to make as a friend is this dude called uh, where oh, man, I almost have too many NPCs now. Um, but yes. Looking for me, but I don't see it. You're talking about heaven, the pink black Mothrin. Oh yes. Uh, so I'm pronouncing their name um, Havan, but Heaven is oh, cool too. Right on. Yeah. So there's chars who are like cooks. There's steeps that brew like beer or tea, uh, and then there are chops, which is one of the other I think. Um, or maybe I made that up. Anyway, um, but. <laughs> Uh, like chops are the people that work uh, at chop stations um, and uh, you all had the option of making friends with a uh, pink and black Mothrin named Havan who is like an artist as far as chops go um, he works aboard the every piece which is a, a ship that is also a chop station within the hunting family fleet um and it's basically a vessel people will bring their like whatever to to like wild have game. yeah their wild game to have chops like professionally cut them up and prepare them into like steaks uh Ooh. take the bones out uh like get the unwanted fat and other stuff off um the chops typically will do it for free but then that kind of gives them free license to take whatever they want. <sighs> so, um, um, yeah. Just so you know, I, I built a connection with Havan. Um, oh, you did? Yes. I don't know if that is worth bringing up right oh, now. I wrote down Ikate and Ali Ali Oxen Free. I don't know why. Maybe I misread. So oh, you... the, the, the connection I wrote for Havan was um, that the death on board the Streganona, which is the ship that died before uh, Dill was born from its ashes. Uh, that chef was like a huge Havan fanboy. Uh, mm. Loved cooking his recipes and uh, and working <laughs> with him. And so uh, Dill exists in this ether, like echo of fandom over someone he doesn't totally understand. Uh, and uh, has Dill Dill like is knows him from a past life, essentially. Yeah. Does has Dill met him or? Um... No. This is like a this is like a, a hero figure in his mind. He doesn't understand who he is. <laughs> He's just like he knows okay. that his past self what vaunted this individual. So. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. When you Can we make that Havon like a Gordon Ramsay? Can is that a yeah? I want yeah. Hundred percent. <laughs> Havon is a moth is a moth Gordon Ramsay Gordon Mothrin. Well, no, because he's not. He's not a char. Well, yes, he is. I'm. I'm sorry. I wrote chop is. and char. Yeah, I did. Read say... your own notes, yeah, sir. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I wrote these months ago. Okay. So, no excuse. Yet. I when, know. When you say that Hivan is like an artist as far as chops go, I imagine Hivan is making like meat flowers. <laughs> <laughs> That is Sounds sick. Gross. I'm uh, like thinly thinly sliced, like uh, carpaccio. Really, like thin wolf carpaccio. Oh my god! What does he do with the tongues? Like the little <laughs> He's got like, a... jointed tongues they have. Uh, uh, That's the rose mops, them. Nick. God. That's the stem of the meat rose. Okay, let's get back to this journey I'm having you all <laughs> depart on. So, um, there are two mandatory actions that need to be taken during journeys. Uh, we are on, so journeys have three steps. There's departure, progress, and encounters, and then arrival. They are measured along a progress track, like a lot of things in this game. We are skipping departure. You all have already been on the way. And in fact, we're skipping most of the progress. You all are one step away from fulfilling the track to get there. It's going to mm -hmm. take basically like a day, a day and a half to get there. Okay. So the two mandatory actions are someone needs to be at the helm, which Captain uh, mm -hmm. Soliday it will happily do. Uh, she's very experienced as a helmsman, as well as being a captain. Um, 
but someone else she is more than happy to like take a break um she's got lots of other work she can be doing uh and then someone also needs to be on watch uh and there are special options of what you can focus on or what you do while at the helm and on watch and then there are um some optional actions such as tending the engine cartographizing engaging with an encounter or watching the weather um so uh i what i guess need from each of you is uh what are you doing um if you're not doing one of these actions you can um also do um a montage action um which is described on where are the montage actions I believe those are Oh, right above it, uh, in the orange box. Uh, acquisition, recovery, or creation. So, um, does anyone want to lay claim to being at the helm or on watch? I would like to be on watch. Okay. Um, excellent. What about the rest of you? Does anyone want to be at the helm or any of the other journey actions? I can be at the helm if, uh, or or tend tend the engine, either or. I would like to be cartographizing. Okay. Please. Sure. As long as we have somebody at the helm. Do you like have a preference? Or I guess the captain. The captain, we, we already the have, captain, the captain can take that one unless yeah. someone wants it. No, then I definitely want to be cartographizing. I want to be... I don't know, you tell me when we get to describe scenes after we finish picking rules. Yeah. Uh, I think Dill might be watching the weather. Okay. I'll tend to the engine though. Yeah, taking a break from the kitchen, getting the fresh air. Okay. So let's start with at the helm. There are three options. Cut a path, travel at a decent speed safely, marking a single progress box. That is what uh, Captain Soliday is gonna choose. But otherwise you can forge ahead through rough passage, marking extra progress. This is like going fast um, with a, a risk. Um, you can drop anchor to rest, making no progress, uh, but um, uh, there is a, a small risk of being interrupted if something finds you, um, and so on and so forth. So let's start with on watch. Who was on watch? This was, um... Salt. Salt. Okay. As one player is deciding which option to pick at the helm, another should be put, uh, sh another should be putting their character on watch. When it's your watch, you decide whether you're going to spend some of your resources to make a discovery or leave things up to chance and make a watch roll. Um, so, uh, I, you get to choose between make a discovery or make a random roll on the watch roll result, and I am going to roll to determine if a threat appears. So I do get to roll in the system. Excellent. Um, so would you like to um, make a discovery which involves using a chart or a whisper? Um, uh, uh, oh, random choose, roll. Choose a chart, add a whisper, and then interpret what that means for a discovery. You want a random roll? Yeah, I want a random roll of this. OK. That uh, excites me. Okay, so there is a chart for this. Um, this is a roll. Um, while the player on watch explains, uh, da, 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 nope. Hold on. Watch rolls and threat. How is this different? Oh. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, I roll 1d6 to determine the level of potential threat. Okay. Do, 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 do. The way it's presented on this, like, cheat sheet looks like we make a decision for threat, uh, discovery, or random roll. 
Yeah, make a random roll of discovery. But the threat part is is in secret. Um, watch yeah, roll but if result. we choose threat, then you secretly roll 1d6 oh, to okay. figure so you some things roll out, 1D6. is what I think. Yeah, 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 okay. Firefly secretly rolls 1d6. To determine the level yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this threat. is like an and or an or. Yeah, not spelled out very well. Why don't you go ahead and roll me a um, some sort of roll? I w what I was trying to determine is like, is this a action roll or do you just roll like a 1d6? Um, yeah, on watch roll, re make a random roll on watch roll results. Creation roll results, recovery, resource. I don't see oh, watch I, okay. roll yeah, results. Yeah, yeah. You so you get you roll to determine do you see what it, the the threat that's coming or um uh or are you like in the thick of it uh by the time you notice it. So give me um some sort of Where's the like, watch roll results thing? Uh, it's it's um, not on this like it's roll. on page 73 okay it uh a six would be peaceful five to four is order uh and one two or three is nature you encounter something born of the wild unknown um, the engines were for my watch, I get a... The example is also unhelpful. Oh, come on. Watch. You either explain your discovery or roll to determine what the crew encounters. So yeah, I think you just roll sense with uh, an edge. Okay. Or just roll 1d6. Roll a single d6 and check the result against the table below. Okay, I see. Oh, okay. So it's not like a skill thing. Page uh, 73 on the PDF. Okay, thank you. So yeah, 1d6. It is a three. A nature. Three nature. Okay. An encounter with something born of the wild unknown or a feature of the sea you might experience... Okay. There's a bunch of things. Okay, so we'll get around to that. Um, I think we can focus on the cartographizing next. All so, right. So cartographizing allows you to slowly create a chart of the area you're traveling through. The Firefly sets a pathfinding track, and every time you find a particularly important landmark, such as an island, a spit, a horror, or a wonder, that track gets marked. When the track is fully marked, you gain a chart, add it to your resources, and name it after the area you're passing through or something related to one of the landmarks. Um... So I'm going to say that the particular area that you all are passing through here uh, is the rib fields. Um, this is an area where there are lots and lots of bones of leviathans that have been here for hundreds of years. Um, the, I described the fox lofts as having like really bright green and gold leaves uh, as the primary colors in the trees here um and and most of the foliage but in the rib fields those colors get a little muted um and there's these branches you know wrapping around like house sized bones and teeth um i i think that this is also an area where um the cosmers uh vessel found uh like the leviathan bone that i described in um the vignette is being at the front of their ship and mm -hmm. the namesake uh, the the new namesake of their ship um but it is bad luck to change the name of your vessel isn't it travis yes mm -hmm. absolutely try to warn them against it but yeah um so yeah there's a lot of remains in this area um and it's relatively safe because the the bones are are big uh, so they're easy to avoid. It's not like there are reefs of smaller bones that you can run into. Right. Um, 
But yeah, go ahead and take a chart for the rib fields um, as you're kind of plotting your course and updating the migration of a lot of the bigger bones. And mm -hmm. um, I think one um, aspect of this that makes it uh, interesting uh, and important to chart this place regularly is that with every root quake, meaning kind of like an earthquake as as trees shudder and fall or reorient mm -hmm. themselves in massive ways, uh, the bones shift around a lot. So it, it's more about like saving yourself a lot of time or being able to go on a, kind of autopilot with a ship right. uh, through the night and being able to be safe. Um, okay. And then what was, um, what were the rest of you doing? Really quick, if I can interrupt. interrupt. Yes, please. Um, I'm out of space for charts. Okay. Um, so I just added on my personal notes and just keep track of it. Here, why don't I just do... Is it like a part of the ship's hold or something? Yes. Or... Oops. Oh, Thank look you. at you. I'm trying here. I promise to try to use some as soon as I can. <laughs> please do. Uh, okay. Good. Perfect. All right. Um, what is Amber up to? Uh, she is tending the um, engine. Okay. All I right. I think she wanted to try to muffle the engine. Okay. Um, so that they could maybe travel a little quieter than they normally would since they're just coming off of an encounter. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, that was her, her goal is to maybe just like, just to get back to their, uh, port as okay. like without any further injury. Excellent. Uh, you, so muffle the engine narratively, you surround the engine with bedding and whatever else is to hand. It's not perfect and it doesn't reduce the noise of the bite, but it means you're able to travel quieter than your usual. Um, Use a soft muffling resource. Either increase impact on a roll made to take advantage of the ship's new quieter profile or stealthily leave an area without making a roll. Um, only if you haven't been spotted yet. Okay. Uh, I would imagine we use a lot of the pinwolf hides that we took from all of their <laughs> dead bodies sure. to make. Well, but you haven't um, skinned them yet. Maybe maybe part of this um, action is like doing some skinning. Okay. Okay. Um, and then um, what is Dill up to? Um, <clears throat> Dill is watching the weather. He's uh, that's right. Taking a break. Okay. The, uh, it, I, I said earlier getting some fresh air and then I realized still doesn't know what fresh air is, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. He's taking he's taking the fresh air. Just as important as watching the waves, watching the skies clues you into weather changes before they happen, allowing you to plan for or avoid dangerous weather. When you're watching the weather, roll 1d6 just as if you were on a normal watch, but use the table on the right to read your results. And this is on page 75. There's a weather watching results table. So, um, yeah, just roll 1d6. Okay, and actually this articulates roll 1d6 just as if you were on a normal watch. So this clarifies the watch roll. <laughs> uh, so I can't use any edges or anything. No, no, this in is just a one d six. All right. The weather doesn't care how cool you are, or how well prepared I am to watch the weather. Yeah, it cares only how cool you're about to be. All right, one because it might rain or something. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> All right, you ready? I love this thing. Yep. All right, rolling. Two. two. A, two. a change for the worse. The oh, weather boy. is about to turn <laughs> against you for the next part of your journey. Uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Hey, you're you're there watching it. Uh, we'd be lost That's without true. you. I All right. We'd still be experiencing the weather, but you saw it. <laughs> so Dill, Dill not being able to take his eyes off the horizon is just like flapping one arm like guys something 
Something's <laughs> happening. Do you articulate that through our uh, the uh, our tube system? The, the yeah, can uh, with a string. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What does still sound like? Um, you know when you drag a like uh something like wet and friction over like a smooth surface and it kind of squeaks in different pitches as if those pitches could turn into a voice like you know he just he's awesome. just like kitchen he's like kitchen like a speaking spell like kitchen sounds turned into uh, <laughs> there's something on the horizon <laughs> just imagining like a bunch of silverware like jangling yeah like, exactly it's, in it, his throat. It, it, yeah he, he shouts in the sounds of pots clattering, like you know. And, uh, <laughs> Fuck, I and, love it. And so and, and and like and like growls with the sound of water boiling, like. Uh, mm. you know, is... Perfect. So you hear some nervous water boiling on the intercom, and he's like, "There's something on the horizon." <laughs> Perfect. Uh I I'm not sure what that. I'm seeing because the firefly hasn't clarified. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, um, wow, this is the, what an interesting combination uh, we have here. So, um, it turns out that this, uh, the next day, uh, or, or late into the afternoon, um, it is getting incredibly hot um sweltering sweltering heat uh which is you know evaporating what little moisture uh and liquids you all have lying around that aren't like contained um and it leaves kind of a dour um atmosphere among the cosmer um who i think are just eager to get onto land and rest and relax a little bit. Um, but this also is something that they all, as well as you all know, is you kind of need to be aware of it, particularly in this area of the Fox Lofts. Um, there are, when it gets incredibly hot, a number of insect swarms that tend to come out because the um, area beneath the thrash in the, in the tangle just below the, the surface um it gets too hot um and they need the the insects have to like get up into less stifling air the the options for animals are either go up or go down um because it just like is too insulated in the tangle um so you um you do manage to spot this uh, a number of swarms uh, as they're rising up phasm, but it also means that it will be very risky to proceed. Um, there are only a, a few routes available to you with all the massive bones in the way, uh, and the captain uh, warns of something called woke bone sickness, which is an infection that lives in the bones uh, of creatures alive or dead that possesses the bones and makes golems out of them again regardless of whether the the creature is alive or dead the bones become animated by this <laughs> disease uh it is considered an arcanotic infection arcanotics being the kind of like space magic in season two of fable table we would call this the way um mm -hmm. So it is kind of an inexplicable thing. Um, some suspect that it is just space magic at work. Others think that it is a space magic or Kreserin induced virus that, uh, that uh, affects calcium and kind of possesses it. Uh, so there isn't really any um, complete knowledge on exactly what causes this. But getting too close to the bones is really risky. So you have a choice. Uh, do you all stop and wait for the swarms to pass and for uh, a safe passage to open up that is far away from the bones? 
um, but risk a swarm approaching? Or do you forge a path ahead um, into a swarm or forge a path ahead near bones? So stop or pick your poison. Damn it. Is this a I... new day and a new part to the journey where we switch roles? Um or no. Uh we can switch roles uh if we if we want to stop uh and let time pass. Uh, but I will just Oh, go ahead. Sorry. But otherwise, um the captain has kind of brought the circle of trust together, including this guy Salt who spotted the swarms. Um and is asking you all for your opinion on the matter. Uh, just you know, the word swarm is specifically named in the ornate cannons and uh, bonus, uh, you know, area of damage or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dill, are you saying you want to shoot your cannon at a swarm of insects? Uh, I feel like that's what he's saying. That is an option. I'm just going to put on the table as one would a starter caprese salad. <laughs> That's an option I'll leave on the table. Feel free to take a piece. Mm. Oh, is, is there, so y'all are like standing in the in the helm's room. Are, did you bring like a snack? Of course he brought a snack. <laughs> I brought I brought a snack, but to, to but to make the point that he's making, he took the cannon off of his arm and put it on a nice platter and set it on the table as well. <laughs> nice. Um I uh, my gut feeling is to go through the swarm because if we go through the bones uh and we get the you know um the bone spookies then that might reanimate the fucking pinwolves that we just killed that are still on board. Look at like look at look at your face. You're so you're like <laughs> <laughs> you're so devious. Um, you don't need like an army of little liches on our ship. God damn it! <laughs> but I liches are my specialty. I know it's called woke bone sickness, but I really like bone spookies. <laughs> bone <laughs> <So> spookies. <laughs> <laughs> mm, you do make a good um, point, Amber. Nick wants to I use think... the word phylactery so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I vote swarm, but that's just me. We so could also even... that that makes logical sense to me. We could also just wait and see if the swarms pass us over without attacking. We roll We're that? Storm. It's going to the weather. We're a bit overladen with people. Yeah. Do we have the resources to wait. Uh, that's a good question. We have plenty and of. We're in it. Hmm. Go ahead. No, Dill, please. We're. We we have plenty of food, but we're in a drought. And we don't have water forever. Um. Mm. I can only squeeze so much water out of the carcasses of the pinwolves that you, until you notice that it's not water that you're drinking. So, um, you know, uh, I'm trying I'm trying to make bone marrow hooch, but it's not going so well. So, um, you know, <laughs> would would that would that be hydrating? Oh, that would got me. Thank you. Uh, it would be sterilizing. <laughs> <laughs> You can eat anything if you wash it, would, it down with it. It would be distracting, is what you're saying. Yes. If this is anything like the blood wine you made before, count me out. No. <laughs> yeah, please don't use blood as an ingredient again. I don't even remember that week. <laughs> I do, says the captain, and she just like does a thousand yard stare like at the floor. <laughs> <laughs> That match was almost perfect. I just need to perfect the recipe. What's what say well, you? Uh, s s was it salt? Yeah, you could you could call me that. What would you like me to call you? Salt. Okay. Uh well, uh, what about you? Have you um, been in this sort of a predicament out there with your crew? Any thoughts? Uh, I'd like to see what the weather would be like to go through. 
That's what interests me. Well, the weather is, it's hot. Oh. So staying put r risks, puts um, at risk your resources, particularly water and, and hydration. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to avoid the uh, the swarm if at mm. all possible, but I, I don't want to just sit here and wait it out. Fair enough. All right. Well, we can uh, take some precautions and forge ahead into the Hornets. Um, well, yeah. Captain, uh, if you let me take the wheel, I can try to find a path on the way through, plus... I can take the heat. If everybody else wants to bunker down. So this is a good idea. Be fine. All right. I'm going to say, uh, Dil, Dil can also... I don't think he needs water. This is true. Very okay. well. Uh, we will uh, lock the doors um, and leave you all to it. Uh, we'll tend to the engine. Um, shout into the tubes if you need anything. And once it's safe, uh, I'm not a... familiar with the nature of the hive engine, but if it produces its own heat, I would recommend uh, taking shifts manning the engine so as not to overexhaust your uh, engineers. Mm, fair. We will, uh, we can coordinate shifts. Amber, make it so. <laughs> you got it, boss. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, it sounds like uh, the seals are going to be an important factor of your ship. Um, and mm -hmm. that despite the heat, at least for the moment, um, the crew is going to use um, anything they can find, particularly some of this... Um, like extra driftwood and metals and the squirrel suits and just like reinforce all of the seal areas. Um, Can I use the sap to do that? Do you have sap that you have handy that you can use? Not on me, but I know that I can control it to some degree. Like, okay. like pull it, like I guess, like if we're in the trees, I could probably pull it up from the trees and help okay. to like reinforce the yeah the body of our vessel. Okay, I'll I'll buy that. Um, all right. Mm. Okay, so I think that to get through this, wait, Dill, what are you? How are you helping? Like, what are you going to be doing? Uh, Dill is positioning himself at a point at the bow of the boat with his cannon, and. Uh... <laughs> Trying to pull all of his metal parts as close together as possible, turning himself into a turret. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Like, uh, like he's like a little turret with a, with a Dutch with a Dutch oven on top sure. of it. So. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, um, what I'm going to need is some sort of uh, check from. Prickles to take the vessel through the swarm as most of the crew is huddled and trying to keep the hornets out. Um, and then Dill is, I guess, trying to deal with the hornets. I'm going to reduce the hornet population with my <laughs> impact increase when attacking swarms or hordes. Excellent. <laughs> And okay. you've used the word swarm too many times to, to you know. I have. I've said it a <laughs> bunch of times. Okay. Nick. Yes. Nick, I would like to use the dusty chart that I have, pull it out, Ooh. tag it to the area beyond the wheel. And on this chart is a small path through this area. What it is is... It's low light. It has, it's a chart that has topography on it. Now I'm looking for higher areas that get us out in the exposed sun and away from just clumps and clusters where swarms can surround us. They'll have to come from underneath us, past the tentacles, which can damage things with salt. Which probably is not good for flying insects. So I'm going to try to go atop the edges of the trees, and I want to expend this chart if I can 
to aid me in my uh, ability to navigate the ship. And by studying the chart and using that to go my path, I want to use study as my skill. Okay. Uh, that sounds good to me. Uh, and then what edge are you using? Hmm. I think logic, wit, and planning. I think I am planning my path on the way through for a path of least resistance and safest routing for the ship, regardless of what swarms I see or where I see any collections of bugs. I'm going on the path that gives us the best chance to get through, and if swarms attack, that's still his problem. Okay. Uh, take 5d6 for sharps, 3 in study, and then your dusty chart. I have deleted my dusty chart. We're going to extend uh, it. No, you do not need to spend it. Why? Uh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I want you to, um, add to the dusty chart that it is of, um, hmm. Biography? Well, it, so this chart must be of what? Like, insect? Uh, like, like, so what about it is helping you here? I'm going to the highest points I can on the trees. Oh. My chart tells me the topography of the area. So I want to put essentially the tentacles in between us and the trees. I don't want to get us boxed in. Okay. I don't want to get us going at a low pathway where there's trees on either side of us because then Andy can't shoot them. The seals from underneath aren't going to help if the hornets come from up top. Okay. I know they can fly. Sure. So they can get there anyway, but still, I want to go on top. Okay. So can you update this to say Fox Loft topography chart? Um, Nick, just a piece of housekeeping real quick. Your OBS window for the rules is cut off on the right edge, so we're not seeing the chart list oh, I'm on so sorry, folks. the stream. Let me see about adding some columns here so we can see stuff. Right, so you said 5d6 while you're messing with this? That's right. Hmm. We have a six, a five, a three, and a pair of twos. Six, a five, a three, and a pair of twos. And that was a cut of two? I didn't hear cut. Oh. <laughs> Although, if you're going to cut this action, I would like to use my born to sail aspect. You always know true north and ignore cut on movement related actions caused by adverse seas or damage to your ship. And you can tell me if this applies or not, if adverse seas is a insect swarm or if that's just a threat. Oh, sorry. Make... I'm sorry. There is sorry, there's no cut on this roll. Mm -hmm. Cuz you're trying to determine the best route. I am going to make you make a ship roll of speed that will be augmented by your success here. So yes, a 6 okay. is fine. So that is going to give you an advantage on the ship roll. I'm sorry. I got okay. myself confused. Trust me, I'm spitballing rules as we go. Okay, let me find um, a good... Maybe dark and stormy? No. Let's see about this track. Oh, dark and stormy is a great drink. I love dark and stormies. That just reminded me I need to go to Rachel's ginger beer soon. Okay. So, uh, as you begin to unfurl the sails, uh, well, there are no sails, are there? It's just your spectacular. Well, but it's not as windy of a day today, unfortunately. Mm. It's hot, 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 and stagnant. Um, so you do not benefit from additional speed because of the bad weather roll. Um, so you are, uh, taking the vessel in, um, and you are going to have plus one on this speed roll. Um, so there is, yeah, just give me, just give me a speed roll, uh, which is going to be 2d6. Uh, your ship has a speed of one, um, and... Uh, you're getting plus one from your topography chart um, being very useful here. Is that me making this roll? That is correct. We have a three and a two. Okay. A three is a disaster. 
Oh boy. Um, okay. So, um, it becomes readily apparent, um, as you make your way towards the swarm that these insects are aggravated. Uh, the buzzing grows very loud, very quickly, and they begin to attack the ship. Um, as well as, well, it's really just you, uh, as well as the tentaculary. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm going to, um, I'm going to damage the tilt of the ship, um, as a result of the, um, the disaster, the hornets, um, starting to attack the ship. It is really fucking loud. Um, I also need, um, Shannon, you're working with the hide to board up the ship. Uh, and make sure that the insects aren't getting inside. Can you roll me 1d6 for the seals of the ship? Yes. Uh, and take plus one for reinforcing the, that, the seals. Okay. Four. Okay. That is a conflict, uh, a success with some sort of drawback. Uh, I'm going to say that the pin wolf hides. No, um, it was a four, but do I get like a a plus one or is that or oh no? yeah yeah roll a second die i'm sorry oh i'm sorry i thought it was just one i'm sorry two d uh, i thought so as well sorry one okay. for the rating of your ship's seals and then plus one for the hides that you okay, have I, been using to reinforce it keep the four because i'm scared and then i'll just roll an additional one or do you want me to roll both again roll the or just roll a second one die one more die six Oh, excellent. Okay, so uh, you managed to keep the hornets out. Uh, everyone is safe for now, um, and the pinwolf hides are sturdy. They're they're tough enough to hold back the claws and mandibles and stingers for now. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Dill, where are you as as this is going on? Bill has mounted himself at the very bow of the ship, um, just just like a, a a narrow little pile of kitchen goods locked together, um, with a cannon sticking out the front and a Dutch oven. <laughs> okay. Dill made uh, himself a figurehead. Yeah. <laughs> I, figurehead I'm ready for, for the swarm. Uh, and and are you just like? there to distract the hornets or are you going to oh, start shooting I, at them i i am going to open fire they're they're here i've got long range blasts but they're they're here i'm opening fire okay um uh, yeah uh i, I am I going to introduce a um oh. on the notes uh escape swarm uh a three step track mm. uh Actually, these are these are bugs. This is going to be a four step trap. They are flying bugs. This is going to be a four step trap. Um, so can you give me your blast? Uh, yes. So attack. Uh, we'll be doing um, iron for the edge, which is force determination and willpower. Mm -hmm. uh, brace skill of defense, hard headedness and immobility. Uh, to weather the stormy uh, swarm. Um, and then, can I use two aspects at once, or is that not yeah. allowed to uh, fly? Because uh, the acid edge cook pot, which is protecting me, and then the ornate cannon are both aspects of Dill's construction. So, this action is going to be uh, separate from the consequences. Like, if I choose to... Uh, if, like, if they attack you... You all roll to like deal with Ooh. the fallout of being attacked. Okay. So that would and be separate. Case, okay, then in that case, I think I would switch to doing instinct, um, flourish, and ornate cannon. Flourish being uh, showmanship, uh, rhythm, and performance. Uh, he's watching the swarm, you know, move around in the clouds, and he's waiting for that perfect moment when they're all lined up in one clump in the in the air. Uh, that okay. that perfect shot. I'll you know? buy. I'll buy that it's about rhythm and and not hunt. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, with um, 
that'll be three dice. And you right. have uh, increased impact here. Three dice. All right, here we go. Six, five, four. Excellent. So that nice. is a success. Um, they, you managed to disrupt the hornets really severely, uh, and they respond uh, instinctively, very terrified of both the noise uh, and the shock wave. Um, obviously, blast from the ornate cannon. What what do you blast out of it? Uh, the ornate cannon blasts explosive shells. Um, so just a careening ball of fire that expands out like birdshot. Oh, okay. And and then those shells explode on impact. Yes. Um, okay, wow. Yeah, so a huge chunk of this swarm is dissipated, uh, but there are many hornets that aren't caught up in that that begin to attack you. Um, how do you deal with that? Uh, when they're swooping in for attack, Bill tucks his uh, arm in under himself and uh, tries to lower down turtle style under the Dutch oven that he wears <laughs> on top of himself, um, leaving just like random cooking implements exposed as well as his uh, uh, anchored object heart, which I guess in the drought would also be like dry and oxidized looking. That's how he experiences the drought, I imagine. Mm, OK, his little, his little iron fish heart is looking very brittle. Aww. Okay, give me like an iron and a brace with uh, one advantage for this acid etched cook pot. You got it. Another three. All right, here we go. Oh, wait. Hang on a second. Six, five, five, five. five. Damn. Okay. Uh, the hornets go Good for ball. you, um, and they know what humanoids look like, uh, so they're going for your head. Uh, that's the obvious place to go to take uh, a creature out. But you're not a, a, a creature in the same sense that they think you are. Uh, you are not made of flesh. You are made of metal. Uh, so you, um, yeah, manage to. Their spookiness has no like strange impact on me since I'm already a golem. I'm sorry. Their spookiness of turning shit into golems like oh no no, no. so the hornets are are different the, the captain was worried about going near the leviathan bones because oh, there's a it. bone okay. disease yeah. that if you all got near it could infect Ooh. uh any I, I thought, anyone I or anything on this illness My no bad, I no the hornets okay. do not have bones either which is why they are okay. also unaffected Cool, cool, cool. Never um, mind. You would be unaffected by this, and I think that Prickles might also be unaffected unless we want to decide that Ectus have bones. Um, but that was, we don't have to have that conversation right now. Um, I want you to mark your acid etched cook pot um, as it is going to get a little scuffed up, but not, not so bad. Okay. Um, that's that style of cast iron and enamel, you know? <laughs> yeah, so you are getting actively swarmed, but you are holding position. Um, besides reinforcing the whole of the ship so that the hornets don't get in, what are the rest of you doing downstairs or or oh, behind Was there doors? supposed to be a twist with the result? Oh, yeah, with the double fives. The double fives. Six, oh, five, five. Well, sure. Uh, any pitches for a twist for Dill? My pitch is that uh, for an extend extended period of time, uh, he's going to Dill is going to be experiencing a buzzing sound from somewhere within him that he can't quite pinpoint. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. I do, love you, it. do you approve, Andy? Can you hear that? Goodness, it's irritating. It's, <laughs> it's irritating. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I I'm down if Andy's down. I think that's Absolutely. a good way. Perfect. Okay. So, um salt um and amber. What uh any anything in particular you want to be doing or should we just continue forging ahead? Um No, you go ahead. 
Uh, I think Salt is still kind of learning the new crew and the ship. I in like exposing the elements. I think he'd be very like he'd naturally take to like the kite sails or um, like a lot of above deck stuff, below deck stuff. I think mm. he just doesn't really know what to do or how to help with this crew with this ship yet. I so think I think he's Amber, just kind of hunkering down. I was going to say, I think Amber might put you to work if you're like anywhere near. Um, if willing to help. Yeah. Yeah. So like she just I think she puts like a knife in your hands and like a dead wolf like by oh. you. And it's just like. <laughs> got it. Rip it. Yeah. Like trying to teach him to go through the motions bop it. of like bop it, twist it. Yeah. Just, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> And, um, you know, because he's another set of hands below deck. And I think she's doing that with, like, the rest of the survivors, too, who are, like, kind of just waiting it out. She's just passing out knives and shoving wolf carcasses, like, out to try and get as much of the hides done and cured as she can. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it's just, like, a no idle hands sort of scenario for her. Like, while there are, well, while there are things to do that can be done, she's just doing them um but then uh with the heat i remember you were saying were you concerned about like about the hive like overheating because like i think that because it's like lower in the ship i was concerned about like the engineers tending to the hive overheating because it's already quite hot and i imagine yeah. it's hot on the ship but also in the engine room uh I've worked in factory jobs uh, near the like main source of power for a, a line or machine. It's hot. <laughs> you don't want to spend too much time there if you can help it. So I was just like uh, suggesting anyone tending the, the hive or in that space, we just like move to another room, put someone else in and then switch back and forth. OK, so then maybe we'll not all be like by where the hive and the maw are and we're just gonna we're gonna shift folks out um so that's what that's what we're doing below deck okay um amber you get a flash of a memory here Ooh. uh there's not a lot of context here and not not really a memory coming back but you get a flash of you delegating work like this in a kind of a tense situation uh, from your life 300 years in the past when you came to this or lived on this planet in its prime. What were you telling people to do? Oh, I'm going to use my story dice. Hang on. Mm. Ooh, fun. You're my favorite. Okay. Uh... I might actually ask you to roll them at some point in the future for everyone to, for inspiration okay. for a thing. I had an idea earlier this week, but not not this session. I've probably. got mystery. I've got fantasy, and then I've got voyage, and then mm. plain old story. Voyage Voyage will be useful later. Uh, but yeah, feel free to roll like mystery or fantasy. Right on. Okay. And and we can interpret what that means for what your past life was. Okay. Oh, fun. I've got a ship. I've got I think it's just a stick. Um there's a dragon. I don't know if you guys can see these dice very well. Um Yeah, pretty well. Try it. A trident, a house. Mm. Uh, do Do you want to interpret these, I, or I know that in some I'm of open, our, I'm open to whatever. If If you guys have some like ideas, I think this is just like a forest and like a path. Um, seems like kind of a ring. I, I, I've got one for you since uh, you and I have talked about handing me reins for some of your backstory, please. if you want. Yeah, so if any of these are interesting to you, please, yeah. So, um, 
<laughs> so he, let's talk about the history of the Verdancy uh -oh. and this world. Um, you don't know much about it. I know that you have picked up a uh, a kinship with another uh, amber clad, um, much like yourself, who probably doesn't have all of their memories intact either. But um, you know from the general, I, I guess the stories, at least this is what they say about the history of this world. Um, everyone knows that this planet is called Thalassa. Um, and it was a corporate stronghold. Uh, no, no, not a stronghold. It was a small corporate uh, colony with one uh, metropolis and a couple other cities on it. Um, and around the time that the Verdancy occurred, there was an attack on the planet by one of humanity's enemies among the stars. Um, they sent a number of their uh, god-like mechs uh, that were met by some of humanity's god-like mechs. Uh, and we're going to just start calling those rather than, uh, I think in previous seasons of the show, well, uh, season two, we called them um, Sparkborn. Uh, anyone that was created, that, that was given sentience, um, by star starboard energy. We're just going to start calling them divines now. Ooh, uh, okay. Yeah. So some enemy divines uh, were sent to attack this planet and were met with uh, Earth uh, or, or humanities divines. And then somewhere in that conflict, uh, uh, during a battle, the verdancy just struck. And not really oh, I... much is known beyond that. Um, there are a lot of rumors, there's a lot of stories, but, uh, you seem to recall, uh, ordering pilots to take to their stations. And you seem to recall this in a really chaotic moment. And the only thing from the past that, that comes to mind is that attack. Okay. So, so I, the memory is really just of ordering pilots to their vessels. Like, conceptually, that's what comes to your mind, is ordering pilots to vessels. Okay. Okay. But I don't know if I was a good guy or a bad guy. You have I don't know if, if I was no the attacker idea. or the attacked. I just know I was making people get onto ships. Okay. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Brian, I'm gonna need you to make another roll for the ship to keep keep really? it going. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Y'all need to try and break move, move past these hornets. So I need another speed check from you for the ship. You still have plus one from your chart being super super useful here. All right. It's uh, two dice. Two dice. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, I had something I wanted to try sure. that maybe could affect this. I know we're low on water and mm. fire is something we don't use in this world. Fire is anathema. It is an yeah. existential threat. Bitter, but I know bitter that, enemies but... will work together. Like you might be in the middle of a battle with pirates and if fire appears, Y'all work together to put that shit out. That's how bad fire yeah. is. Mm -hmm. So fire is a no-go, but I know if there's swarms of bees and I want to calm them down, I can use smoke Ooh. to try to calm them down. But without fire, I can't create smoke. But we have this ship that's been riding on the absolute top of the waves. Mm-hmm. And it is scorching hot outside. I bet that our deck is roasting hot from sun exposure. Nothing, no shades, no shadow. So as I keep the ship moving and I see hornets swarming Dill to the front, pinging against that pot he's got on his head, 
I'm going to go ahead and grab one of our precious barrels of water, which I know is a resource we don't want to use. And I'm going to kick, like, smash the top of it a little bit and then toss it onto the deck and try to create as much steam mm. as I possibly can in an effort to calm these hornets down and scare them away from our ship. Okay. Uh, give me... What would this be? I don't know. Concoct? Cook? <laughs> I don't know if you have a skill that's going to apply here. Is it, uh, does Prickles have instinct? I do not have instinct. I imagine I would argue to use sharps as my edge for logic wit and planning i think this is a sneaky smart idea i think that's to use logical steam instead of smoke yeah sense intuition yeah i'll give you sharps that's fine but i don't know if any of the skills you have are gonna apply here i could see outwit being <laughs> yeah. outwit maybe avoid hey, threats to move them right where you want but them I think this you're is manipulating the threat i think this is like concoct or cook honestly yeah yeah. Um, I think that's fair. I think it's really clever. Um, uh, I will, as someone that studied science uh, in undergrad, say that <laughs> uh, steam is very different from smoke. <laughs> True. But this is, I, I also am someone who chooses to picture this through, you know, a camera lens. So, you know, Hollywood, am I right? Uh, so I'll give you plus one. I think this is just 2d6. 2d6, huh? Okay. Okay, so you are, you are, like, stepping away from the helm to do this. Sure. Or are you, like, pulling on the brake? Because, like, if this goes wrong, you have just left your ship on autopilot. But I will say, you have really good charts right now. So mm -hmm. the risk of running into something isn't that great, but if this roll goes real bad, could it, I could see it heading that direction. All right. <laughs> I take I um, in you. I take Dill's snack platter and wedge it under the wheel so it won't move, because <laughs> that's where we all met by the helm to help lock it in place, and then I go kick the sparrow over, and then I try to rush back right away and hope that I don't send us over the waves. 6 coming in. I got a pair of fours, Nick. That's got to be something fun. Okay. Um, yes. Oh, my God. And I, a twist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that... Um... Hmm... All right, I, I, think, I think this is so this works, but at a cost. Um, yeah, I think you're going to take an injury here. I think that's highly appropriate. How am I taking this injury? Um, you're going to take the injury stung and I will decide what the mechanical effect of that is um, in a bit. Injuries um, oftentimes um, impose cut. Uh, mm -hmm. or or reduce the uh, the narrative options you have. Uh, like, let's say if you had a broken arm, you wouldn't be able to dual wield or lift heavy right. things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like, I can just say, like, you can't do that or you, you severe, run the risk of further injuring yourself, that sort of thing. Uh, so right. I'm, we're just going to say stung. Um, I have it under my injuries. Perfect. Uh, so, so that can be cut in all circumstances or specific circumstances or et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you're stung, you um, kick this barrel over and the vapor immediately begins to evaporate in this extremely sweltering day. Um, it's so hot and the air is so dry. I think that the the steam doesn't last very long because dry air is just going to pull that moisture into it and hold mm -hmm. it. But it's enough to get the um, the bugs who do not like getting wet to back off. 
Uh, so they begin to to uh, kind of retreat, at least for the moment, uh, which creates another opportunity, I think, for Dill here. I see. I, I also have a pitch for the twist if it was doubles. Oh yeah, there is a it twist here. Yeah. What's, um, what's the I would, pitch? I would. I, I would assume that like people below deck, you know, can sort of tell by the sounds, the grunts and everything who's doing what up above. So if water's running short, uh, people might be acutely aware that one of their barrels of water just got dumped <laughs> by uh, by prickles. I, I got something with that, too. I was thinking kind of along the same vein. Uh, we were we did just fight off um, those wolves that had very, very sharp Feet. So there's probably like a little bit of water that's coming down through the holes, and that's how we know. Uh, like Salt will point out, your ship is raining. <laughs> did y'all did y'all mop the deck before <laughs> taking <laughs> off? Nope. Mm. No, no, it's just sure did just not. so fun. Great. It's raining blood. Yay. Yay. Uh, oh, well, there's your twist. We washed the deck just now. <laughs> um, okay. I think Amber at this point is going to use the resokinesis to like call some resin and like plug up some of those holes <laughs> to stop that shit from Gross. like raining. Down. I know. Yeah. Not, no. not not the resokinesis or the resin, the blood. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you have <laughs> another uh, opportunity of freedom. Uh, I think that the hornets on the side of the ship that are trying to get in are still being rebuffed by the seals and the hides. Uh, Prickles, are you uh, going to like punch it, Chewy, now? I mean, punch it, Chewy doesn't have a whole lot of aspect for me that's uh, for skinny the engine I, i'm gonna sorry i'm going to mark one more on the escape track because you got the, i was going the to ask to back if off. we were get, yeah yeah um well I then think, I, okay that sorry then that i think goes to somebody else i'm back yeah. at the helm i've kicked the platter out of the way i'm yeah. manning it i'm getting stung left right and center and hoping somebody else does something to get us out of this uh dill the hornets are regrouping into albeit a much smaller uh ha uh, a swarm because a lot of them backed off from your first shot do you want to try again yeah, still, uh, like, one of those collapsible camp cups, like, stacks back up into a, a taller shape and uh, <laughs> pulls his, his uh, cannon back out and aims and fires straight Excellent. at the swarm. Uh, I, same three as before? Yes, please. All right. Hang on a second. Lost my thing here. When you do this, I'm picturing, like, those fireworks where it'll, like, shoot out and then crackling sparks will like yeah. yeah yeah exactly but like bigger <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right here uh, we go three dice uh, five, four five two four two okay all right um so you're going to um shoot the swarm um but uh, you've been using your cannon a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Please check off your ornate cannon uh, as you have used spot. most of your ammunition. Yep. Um, which is hard to come by. Yep. You've, you've, it's... in fact, you've probably been using a lot of it ever since your you kind of formed up as a ironbound yes. and have not found explosive shells with which to replace so you'll either need to find replacement or make do or you know you've only got a few shots left i guess is what i'm saying craft new ammunition is what you're saying like, so, yes, what a great so, idea so like where does dill store the ammunition like is it on his person is it like in a little chest in a pouch yeah his his member his left arm is made of the uh powder magazine from the Streganona. So um there's like odd shelves of ammunition and wares in there and like, you know, just sort of stacked up. That's his left arm. Um so he's been mm. pulling them out. So I assume you could say that uh his left arm is getting very like light and sort of not yeah. very strong as he extracts things from it. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to get a shot of him like opening the thing to like get a, a refill of the ammo and it being like 
humongous like like his whole arm has room for to be yes. stocked and he's like on the last like shelf yes and actually i think in this uh hot weather you would get the cartoon like tumbleweed like rolling out of it because <laughs> nothing in there <laughs> excellent okay yeah you fire yeah. uh dispersing this last um uh bit of the swarm fulfilling the escape swarm track uh, which we will now mark complete and remove from our tracker. Um, and uh, y'all will uh, have Prickles regain control at the helm, uh, not risk hitting any of the skeletal structures of of this area of the fox lofts, the, the rib fields, but getting maybe too close for comfort, knowing that there is woke bone sickness um oh, nice. and be like oh let's go this way and then like mm -hmm. okay we're safe to go shouted through the horn uh and everyone eager to like get out of that hot stuffy room um that had blood dripping in it not moments ago uh Mr. Yuck. yeah yeah and i think that despite the fact that it's really hot the rest of the journey is is uh it's at least peaceful um but people are really eager as you arrive at this like uh the top of a huge um um oh my gosh words are escaping me today i even had coffee really late uh but there's like a skyscraper sticking up out of the the trees uh in one of those kind of cities i just i described and we will see um our our beloved ladle's rest come into view uh at the start of the next day uh and i will describe what you all see when we come back from our break we will be right back all right as our party uh sails ahead to ladle's rest uh you all come across the scene of this uh skyscraper coming out at probably a little bit of an angle uh but just the top of it the, the top five floors coming out of the sea um and normally what we see with what, what you've seen with this city this settlement um is as i described before just a beautiful array like a like a tapestry of tents and buildings and flags being hung on all these exposed floors of this like glorious corporate building you can tell it's made out of really sturdy stuff futuristic materials probably concrete uh metal rebar reinforcing it possibly um there may even still be some glass hanging but probably not in many spots uh and and a city's just been kind of built out of this building um and there is probably a a, a lot of especially in the nighttime a lot of insects hung in jars you know firefly-esque or uh chemicals put out or even i imagine little like glowing grubs like little little worm things that just glow in the dark lots of ways of illuminating the space um there's probably um vegetation that is harvested for oils that are burned uh to create electricity in a very safe manner and what little uh electrical appliances that they can use to run lights work as well to just illuminate this kind of glorious tower um that is ladle's rest um now I want each of you to describe some kind of sense derived, like something sense driven about this city that you love beyond what I've described. So like even getting down to like a specific shop that you like or specific like experiences that you've had in this town, this the city, uh, what is something that we would see on a normal day in this city? that is bustling with activity, with markets, with ships just packing out the harbors, lots of trade, 
uh, stuff going on, uh, cargo and people coming off of vessels and onto vessels. It's a normally a exuberant town here in the Fox Lofts. Um, I think there's like a uh, kind of like if if we were to go to the observatory, they've got like diagrams. There's like a there's somewhere in the city where there's a room. It has a field of stars kind of painted around it um, that illuminate, and they're supposed to be accurate representations of the night sky and maybe some constellation charting or something to, to that effect for mm. uh, study. And I think uh, Salt has been to this city before in kind of his short time uh, down among the waves. And I think he's like eager to go to this spot first. It's just kind of like fascinating to him. He's got his own opinions as to like how wrong the charts are um, <laughs> compared to like his own knowledge. Like I imagine the the Cosmer probably have uh, some constellations that are different than what you guys have down here. Hmm. I love it. What else? Um, I think that Amber, one of her favorite places to go uh, in this city is to a psychic. Um, but the psychic is absolutely full of shit, but she still likes it anyway. And she's just like really enjoying herself. Like the psychic uses like like an old communications device instead of like a crystal ball, like what you might expect. Like she's holding like an old cell phone. <laughs> she's just got like an iPad and is like, yeah, Ooh. and she's exactly <laughs> and she's just, but like, but because it's a Amber, crystal ball app on the iPads, <laughs> it's yeah, got like a exactly. moving screensaver. Oh that's my just God. like a yeah. cloud. But I think because Amber is pre V, like she's just like, Okay, like she, but she's trying her best, right? And <laughs> I think the that <laughs> it's what, yeah, and I think she just really likes going in because, like, this woman is using like what to her would be like ancient artifacts and things, but like it was a cell phone to Amber. Um, but I think the the other thing that she really likes about uh, this city is like all of the bridges to get from one area mm. of the city to the next um and how they've built you know maybe it's made of wood and maybe it's made of like ropes and and whatever but like you can only see people like at any level in the city just everywhere spread out all over and they're all colorful and and really beautiful and i think it kind of uh reminds her of what her old life might have been like it like it like calls to something that like she can't remember but it just feels nostalgic to her you mean like so, population density yeah in a way <laughs> yes okay i think she's just she likes being in a place where there are a lot of people because it, it it reminds her of being mm. uh in the in the city I feel like there's got to be like rooftop restaurants or yeah. uh, like taverns so. or something like that with all these bridges and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely. have a I have a mental image from the psychic of the psychic being like, hold on, hold this. And you can hear voices from beyond. Holds yeah. up like a walkie talkie and then walks into the other room and speaks <laughs> in the <his> time. <laughs> or they have someone like in on it. In another room, oh, going, yeah. oh, oh. Absolutely. <laughs> there's a spooky, like disembodied voice, like spirits talking from beyond, but it's got that very distinct, like PA system clicking on sound before it does. Yeah, it. <laughs> I think, and I think she just, she just enjoys the the showmanship of it all, and enjoys like watching them, mm. you know. There's, yeah, tumble through it. There's a scene in the in the last the most recent and last season of the Umbrella Academy where Klaus 
who can speak with the dead. He I kind love of him. he he's great. <laughs> he kind of gets roped into like being a, a psychic for a really shady dude. I'm not gonna get into what he's doing for this shady dude, but at one point he has like his client close her eyes, and Klaus just like turns on a fan underneath <laughs> that just like rustles the tablecloth and like Perfect. gets the lights flickering, <laughs> just like the performativeness of it even though he like it's unnecessary right yeah <laughs> and then he has like the spirit of a dead person like possesses body which like is what the person hired him to do and all the other stuff is just like flair yeah I just wanted to make more impressive <laughs> yeah. uh, I love him no I haven't seen all of the last Ugh. season yet so it's we'll talk about it okay moving on what else you said that there's one big skyscraper that's like four or five like stories above the trees. Yeah, that's what I... multi there's seven towers here, right? There's multiple buildings. Yeah, but they are like way spread out. Like mm -hmm. you'd have to take another journey to get to another tower. Ah, okay. Uh, unless there's another one that's close. Maybe, maybe two yeah. of the towers are here. What do you think? One convenient unit away. Yeah, I mean, like, if there are bridges connecting two of the towers or three towers, yeah. we can say that that's, I, yeah, that's no, I was just looking for, I was just, like, spatially trying to orient it in my mind. I think, I think there's maybe a small bit that sticks up close to one of the towers, not, like, larger, multiple stories, but just above the waves, and it's almost like a rooftop market. You have a whole bunch of stalls with all kinds of plants and other specimens from the wild sea, but then also other things from inside, perhaps this building. Because, you know, a couple of floors stick above the trees, but if you go down in the building, you go below the trees, you get all kinds of things. Like, one stall is sitting there selling, like, bits of animals, and the next one is selling plants, and the one next to it has, like, five staplers and a whole bunch of paper clips. And then the one next to it has like office chairs, all kinds of just random things in the market. And above the market are like street lights that don't have oh. actual street lights in them, but that are covered with those glowing bugs to just illuminate everything across the rooftop. Yeah. I yeah, I like the idea that there are floors like below sea level. But well, the yeah. but the vibe is very different because those have to be like hyper sealed in to make sure that plants mm. don't grow in. And there's probably some like um I know that like uh in this fiction, uh, like harnessing storms is a big thing. I bet they have something that like keeps like either chemical or electrical in nature, storm in nature, uh that um keeps plants from growing up into the city. Mm -hmm. Um, it's probably also worth mentioning that there are probably like lots of farms out on the sea. Uh, like imagine kind of like a built out dock that is just around like areas where there are trees and stuff that produce fruit um, that are tended to during the day. Um, Andy, do you have um, some sort of sensory experience or thing that you're that Dill enjoys about? Ladle's rest. Yes. Um, so real quick, if I have a chart, is is there a place to find an explanation of that chart? Is that something we come up with? Is it like just based on the name? Uh, so kind of like how uh, in Scum and Villainy, how as you went on a mission, you had selected your load and then you got to fill in like what your character brought on the mission. Uh, I think the intent and spirit is to like, you fill that in when you decide you want to use a chart and apply that to a role like, oh, there's this old dusty chart of the to topography of the Fox lofts. Right. Um, okay. it. It's old, but it still checks out. Got it. OK, just curious. Then I will not do anything with chart later right now. I would just say um, uh, Dill is uh, loving all of the outside food vendors, just watching them prepare in the way that like watching videos of street food being made is just very pleasing. Um, just like the repetitive nature of these guys who have been cooking that one dish perfectly for their entire lives. Like um, he finds that very engaging and uh, he's he wants to learn. So he's like dying to get just behind these stalls to watch people do it. Mm. 
I Dill's re- YouTube history is full of videos watching uh, Korean street <laughs> food vendors make yeah, the food. It, it literally is like any country and then street food uh, <laughs> montage, you know. I wrote, I wrote lots of street vendors, chops, chars, and then I put parenthesis, one trick branch ponies. Yeah. Sea <laughs> um, c- c- ponies. Um, okay. So, yeah, that, I think, is what we would experience of Ladle's Rest on a normal day. Um, If I had to estimate, like, a population size of Ladle's Rest, it would probably be in the, a couple hundreds. 300? 400? Um, It's, um, yeah, probably about a a hundred people-ish per story. Uh, enough room for lodging and re- recreation and resources and commerce. Um, just to to kind of paint you a picture. Now, there are going to be a lot of people visiting on uh, a busy day, especially lots of wild sailors um, bringing supplies in for trade. Um, this is like this world is an economy of trade. So in, and, and that's a trade of not just resources, but like information, uh, as well as like material resources, food, supplies, weapons, etc., etc. Can we trade things from our ship? Like not, I don't want to trade the fruit tree, but can we take the fruit from our fruiting tree and like create that at port for like oh. replacement parts for the harpoon turret? Uh, that is uh, definitely a possibility. I think that the uh, fruiting tree specifically states uh, automatically acquire a fruit-based ba- specimen when you use a task to tend to the fruiting tree. Um, there was probably an opportunity along the way to grab it. So uh, can I get a description of the fruit-based specimen? Um, sure. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I think in this new sort of like Kreserin mutated world, it's like, I think it looks almost like a pear. I'm gonna guess that it's like a, like a pear or an apple tree, but it, it's pear shape in nature, but when you cut into it, it's like. Like a kiwi? Or like a banana or like something like creamy and like, like sweet and like fragrant inside. Oh, nice. Okay. And I wonder if it's like, is this something that like, I don't know if there, if there's no lore surrounding the fruiting tree, I'm going to say that like it changes every time we go to port and it's a different kind of fruit. I was just going to say like, like automatically acquire and it specifies a fruit based specimen. I think it leaves it open ended. Like, and and even invites you to say like it changes every time. Um, nice, perfect. I love that. It's a, a pear nana. It's a pear nana. Okay. Pear nana. <laughs> Sweet. Pear nana. I'm gonna collect pear nana peels okay. and use them to trip up enemies. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. Okay. So, um, I mentioned that you all have been away for at least a week. Um. I think that we, again, in the HBO special that is the show, we get these shots of like you all going through the markets on the rooftop with all the glowing bugs. We see all of the street food vendors chopping and charring away, making their dishes, talking to people, smiling or gesturing, uh, lots of laughing and, you know, happy tummies, people patting their bellies. Uh, we get a shot of Amber visiting this psychic. We don't hear any words, but we like see them talking and, um, uh, Amber just like happily rolling her eyes and indulging this psychic. Uh, we, (laughs) we see salt like visiting, um, this room with a painted stars. Um, maybe it's a room in the lodgings here. Um, and uh we get like kind of like comparable shots of all of you like really enjoying yourself and then as the like that jovial folksy music i was playing dies down 
we see like on the screen like today and the streets are relatively bare especially like the markets there's few street vendors out um maybe they've got like their like whatever type of i love that the book like lists all the different ways you can cook food that don't involve fire it's just really <laughs> really cool so we see like a couple street carts close together where like they're you know chem chem that is running their uh th what like they they have their way of cooking and preparing food like going but they're all just like kind of sitting together like chatting with one another without much going on uh we see that the the rooftop market only has a few active booths the uh um we see a couple ports that have just like running lines of red flags above them that are just empty flags indicating like do not come here and there is one port with a few vessels in it and that is the port that captain um soliday pulls your vessel the taco tuesday around into um there is it is very quiet. Uh, we we get a shot from like the deck of you all like looking and seeing how kind of like bare uh ladle's rest is and a denoted lack of like sounds like there's some voices echoing like maybe some kids playing down some corridor uh we hear some laughing but it is mm, like there's a stark contrast here and uh as y'all are like walking up the gangplank onto the dock uh i think that soliday will turn to one of you and say this leviathan uh oh she's turning to you salt um i we kind of brushed over the fact that like y'all didn't talk about what attacked you all and she just looks at you you and goes this leviathan that harassed well murdered your crew has been driving business away from the fox lofts and it's starting to show i can see that this is uh this is quite sad you've been here before yes uh there were many more people here well uh we might be heading out of here pretty soon i need to talk to the rest of the crew but if you and your kin need passage out of here uh, i'm sure we can arrange that uh but we also are a light crew so if any of you are looking to stay on happy to take you we can uh work out the details later what um what drives you Huh. Well, and she'll kind of like, like, uh, turn and look at Prickles, who's like, I don't know, carrying something, a bag over his shoulder, maybe, uh, down the gangplank, walking past the two of you. And she'll just say, I like Prickles. I've just been doing this my whole life. I don't really know anything else. Uh, I guess keep myself and my crew fed, take good care of them, enjoy the, places and people and comforts this life has to offer what is uh your mission with this ship well you chose this ship or maybe you constructed or commissioned this ship for a particular reason what was that reason well everyone who has uh, served with me uh since i took over this vessel and everyone that served on it since or uh everyone that served on it before the ship's built to uh i guess kind of stalk leviathans and uh everyone i've known that's served on this ship and the stories i've heard of the people that served on it before had some sort of interest in them or at least in being fed uh the fox lofts is where it's spent most of its time at sea and while lots of crews are, you know, mercenaries, pirates, uh, transportation, 
what have you. This vessel's good at, at stalking and, and staying quiet and uh, researching Leviathans. We've got the uh, Snapographs, and there's a lot, a lot of money to be paid for the migration patterns of Leviathans uh, and other creatures, but Leviathans especially. But I'd suspect with uh, this Leviathan that's been popping up the last month, harassing everyone that takes to the sea. Uh, like, as you can see, life's a changing in these parts, and maybe it's time to move on. There might be a lot of money involved in uh, helping anyone out of this place. So let me know if you and your people want to head out or if you want to join up. Um, we could certainly use the help. And they're paying top, top dollar for uh, wild sailors in these parts since there's so few of them to go around. Our um, function on the Giants Bang, don't like that name, it, it was to uh, try to deter Leviathan, scare them away, or uh, try to handle them, navigate them away from um population centers much like this uh like like Cos I, the cosmer were interested in that sort of thing we have our own issues in the satellite cities but mm. more difficult to develop new um technologies or ways to handle them when materials are much further away so mm -hmm. come down here to learn and try to come up with something that we can bring back home hmm. to help out i think our approach with the old crew the old ship maybe uh was a little too direct i like what i see on your ship the uh, observation room, the, the lens room. And I'm very keen to stay with you guys myself. Yeah. Hoping to, I feel like I can learn much more here. You're uh... not attack these le Leviathan head on, but learn about them and try to be smarter about it. Yeah, your your uh your leaders, the the Cosmerius, they uh they serve the the watchful eyes up in the stars, the the gods, they say. They don't just say it's true. Hmm. Well, uh if they're uh willing to invest, I'm sure uh we could certainly help you and the rest of your like out in figuring out how to deter or at least learn a little bit about uh this leviathan that attacked you all and to be clear not just that leviathan but if we can come up with some sort of solution that's applicable to more leviathans in general learn about them that's what i would really like that's the end goal for me Hmm. Well, who's to say it's not possible? All right. Yes, well, I will stay with you. Um, I feel I think... a lot of my brethren will want to uh, return home. Uh, it's been a harrowing experience. Certainly. Many of us are probably done. Certainly. <laughs> well, uh, I'm. I'm sorry what happened to your crew. I'm. I'm. Glad that we were able to arrive just in time, and uh, the salvage, I, I can't say, wasn't welcome as well. Uh, happy to get your people, uh, anyone really, to, to safe land. Um, but uh, yeah, welcome aboard. But uh, for now, get some rest. Uh, you look like you could use it. And with that... Travis, I want to go over uh, all of the Myers I gave you. Yes. 
Okay, so <laughs> typically, I, I read up on this some more. Typically, a harrowing experience will only result in one mire being marked. So I think I over over marked you. Um, so go ahead and unmark. You fear the coming dawn and crave the night. That should have not been marked in the first place. So okay. I I do feel good, however, about having you have marked something is hunting you. You're sure of it, uh, and your hands shake under pressure. However, you, among all of the party, satisfied one of your drives last session. Protect the crew from terrifying entities. You were directly involved in fighting off the pinwolves. So one thing that happens when you satisfy a drive and roleplay them is you get a couple of options of things uh, you can do with that. That's effectively like marking XP. Um, I've lost the page for this, but um, essentially you have the option to invest that satisfaction of the drive in a milestone um, or in unmarking a mire. Uh, milestones are things that you can convert into character progression, like modifying your aspects or even I think you can take more skills um okay uh, yeah um, yeah so that's how you like age. that's increase your skill in something exactly exactly okay um i'll reference you the right page and then we can come back to you later to address yeah. the satisfaction of that drive um i'll get you a page number here in a second um okay so um in the meantime you all are arriving in ladle's rest um and you have some time uh the captain tells you all before um figuring out what to do next and um as you all meet kind of on the docks there are some dock workers that come up to you all uh and they're basically like waiting to to be told like are is anyone going to stay aboard the vessel to watch it or are are you all going to pay them to be responsible for keeping your ship safe or do they have do you all have any work for them to do uh and i think that the captain is going to basically flag to them that in the cargo hold are a shitload of pinwolves uh to unload them have them processed by chops and chars, uh, and they can they can take their cut. There is a lot of trust built into this economy. So they're gonna get their cut taken out, the chops and the chars and the skinners and tanners and everyone else involved in processing the, the pinwolves are gonna take their own cut and basically whatever specimens and salvage are left over will be returned to you all. <laughs> Um, there is a, uh, some ship workers that note that your ship has some damages and asks if you all want those repaired. Um, you all did salvage some planks and a bunch of other stuff, so they can definitely address that, uh, if we remove the driftwood, light metals, and frayed ropes as salvage. Are you all okay yeah. with that? Yes. Okay. I am. I will remove those and leave engine cogs. Uh, and basically, it is at this point that the pinwolves will become all of those specimens that I described, besides the ones that you right on. skin for hides in a moment of crisis. <clears throat> if you oh. could save the marrow bones, I would like to make a demi glass. Yep. The beast, the beast bones will stay uh, in the specimens. <laughs> there will be far fewer than the dozens that you all killed when you come back, but they will have been harvested into all of these specimens. To be expected, yeah. Okay. Um. So we are. Uh... Oh, there's one. There's a character that's going to run up to you all. Uh, there is going to be a a boy um, that runs up to you all. Let me find their name. 
Sherman. Sherman is an ardent boy. Um, he is a word bearer. Word bearers are people that are essentially postal workers. Uh, if you can call them that, they carry messages from place to place. Sherman um, rides the waves on a small personal vehicle. Um, and uh, he has basically like a little ski do that he rides on the waves. He doesn't take out a ship. He just has like uh, what what uh, the ship calls them outriders. He just rides out an outrider that is retrofitted to be able to go long distances. And he goes out on his own. Um, he's probably 14 or 15 years old. Uh, the, oh perfect, the perfect protagonist of a anime um, set in this fiction. Nick? <laughs> yes. Can we have him like riding a riding lawnmower across the way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, he is just like a three chain chainsaw that just like spins around in a circle, provides a little bit of lift and he just zoom. Uh, he he runs down the docks to greet you all um, and he greets uh, Captain Soliday. Uh, none of you took Sherman as a contact, so uh, I am addressing Sherman as uh, Captain Soliday's. Um, he greets her in a jovial way. She takes off her captain's hat, places it on his head, saying some really cute things to him. Um, this boy is really impressive. He is the youngest word bearer y'all have ever heard of. Um, and he is linguistically uh, gifted. He knows a bunch of languages. Um, he's definitely someone that you all have come to asking to like translate some stuff. Um, you've also... Um, like he brings Captain Soliday a couple letters. Uh, it is of note that they are all opened, despite the fact that they are sealed. She asks him, did you read my messages again? And he just chuckles and laughs. Uh, and then he says, oh, the mayor, the mayor uh, is having a meeting uh, later uh, tomorrow. Um, might be worth checking out. Everyone's going to be talking about the future of this place. And he just like shrugs and says, got work to do <laughs> and runs away. <laughs> Bebops out of there. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I will. If any of you want to have had a letter from one of your contacts that you've picked, um, he hands you a letter from them as well. OK, awesome. Uh, just ask me for that if you want. Um, but at this point, uh, I want to talk a little bit about what people can find at ports. Uh, let me go ahead and switch over here and show the chat. Love it. Um, so if we go over to the terms tab of our little play sheet, uh, the bottom right corner lists a bunch of amenities that basically you can find in all or some ports. So ports and harbors are places to rest, a place to repair, uh, those, um, uh, are the essentials that everyday wild seaport strives to offer. The minimum they can do is attract passing ships and increase their chance of trade and bounty. So it is vital for any and all ports to offer a couple things, if not more amenities, because every port and harbor and settlement rely on wild sailors for trade, for information, for material goods, for resources. Most ports and harbors offer markets, junctions, and shipyards at a minimum. So those are three things you will find in any port and harbor. And then there are oftentimes non-essential services, things like smoke houses, um, where you can smoke tobacco uh, or do other narcotics. Because again, fire is anathema, but there are specially built structures built to contain fire where it is in some places where it is more accepted, okay to use fire. Um, a smokehouse is probably also somewhere you could go to actually cook over an open fire. Um, dill. Uh, there are things like shadow springs, which are hot springs surrounded by layers of tar um, for clothes washing, bathing, and decontamination. There are places called cartoica, 
that are little libraries of maps. They're basically like info broker pa palaces for charts and information about the seas. Uh, take a look at that if you want prickles. There are chop stations, Dill, for extracting the most nutrition from strange beasts of the wild sea. Chop stations are meat preparation in grill houses where the workers will render a creature down into every edible cut and prepare it for cooking or long storage. All of your pinwolves are going to one of these, uh, where the chops uh, and cooks and chars will take what they want and process those for you. Uh, this service is performed free of charge on the understanding that the chop station takes roughly a quarter of every specimen for themselves. Um, I did not go over markets, junctions, or shipyards because I think that the, uh, the, the markets are self-explanatory and so are shipyards, but I'll go over junctions here. They are meeting and sleeping places for all who need them, but they mostly cater towards wild sailor crews. A junction offers private rooms, repairs, medical treatment, beds, food, drink, and entertainment, and usually has a series of boards for bounties and crew requests. Uh, junctions also often have separate counters for sending and receiving mail. Normally, that's where you'd go pick up your mail, but Sherman brought it to you because he wanted to read it. Uh, <laughs> all, any and all of your mail, Sherman has opened. If you're curious how such a young boy learned a bunch of different languages, Shrug. That's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, at this point, um, we only have about ten minutes left. So, your homework for next week is going to be to prepare and decide how you want to spend your downtime before tomorrow's meeting. We will have mm. a montage where you all can select from a bunch of downtime actions. Um. And those are listed on the rules, uh, the rules tab again in that orange box. There are, is acquisition, recovery, and creation. Uh, you can also visit any of the NPCs I listed. I am happy to locate any of them here, uh, with a couple exceptions. Um, but there's lots and lots and lots of people that you can meet. There's lots of stuff you can look for. For your character, you can work on projects, you can work on healing yourselves. Uh, there are going to be some other NPCs that we meet just because, like, if you all don't want to sleep on the ship, you can sleep at, for example, the um, the junction, the, the sailor junction. Uh, the one here is being run by someone named. Let me see if I have. Uh, Brent Brende, uh, on line fourteen of the con uh, the connections tab. Brenda is the owner and operator of the Sword Squirrel Junction House, uh, a widely respected person by all wild sailors for the fairness and quality of service. What they say goes in their establishment. They are looking to expand. Um, it so also yeah. says that they are respectful, sexy, and soft spoken. That's right. I am. <laughs> um um yeah. yeah all right uh so that is going to be it for us today um and yeah that's your Nick, homework yeah any can final... I have a mini, yeah can i have a mini flashback of collecting any hornet carcasses i could find off the ship after that harrowing battle yeah, 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 absolutely. I think that's fair. Um, I think that uh, a lot of them got exploded, uh, but mm. there, there were a number of them that were attacking Dills uh, that probably got shocked and killed, maybe stepped on. Um, so yeah, we'll say that the ship has some... Wait, oh, pair, oh, pair Nanas. I didn't type this correctly. Uh, Pernanas <laughs> and he just said, "As so, what's a pernana?" <laughs> and uh, um, dog-sized hornets. I should have described them as dog-sized. Dog-sized um, okay. hornet. I was picturing something much smaller. I was oh, picturing God. little tiny things stinging me the whole entire okay. time. But you know what? Okay, hey, this is all right. Crab-sized hornets. <laughs> That's okay. also creepy. Thank you. I appreciate. I can it. see one of those rattling around inside of Dill, but like. 
He'd know yeah. if there was a dog in him, right? <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe uh, there are a variety of sizes. Yes. I think that's the solution here. There, there's there are many different sized hornets. <laughs> I'm sure I would say Dill used a small cook pot to like trap a couple on the deck as you would <laughs> trap a spider under a glass. But um, because of the twist, you said where he's hearing the buzzing, Dill is just convinced there's like two more stuck in his body somewhere. That he <laughs> Maybe two of them started making a hive like in the iron yeah. pot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, does, oh, does Dill sleep? Uh, I would say that Dill like rests as one would rest a freshly cooked protein after cooking. Like, Stop it. like he just sort of <laughs> he just sort of sits and resettles, and uh, you know his uh, his joints rest back together, and um, uh, you know his uh, his iron fish heart just you know re- arrives at a resting beat and then and then he's ready to go again here's here's an idea i think dill's like resting is kind of like reseasoning like the way you would reseason the pan like yeah. kind of like oils things Ooh, sure. and yeah oh, he, so gets, he, he gives that's his shower he gives himself like a steel wool scrub and then uh <laughs> and then adds, like, oil back. What happens if he doesn't do this? Does he start to rust or what? Yeah, he starts to he starts to build he up. He just gets a, a little layer, tacky, you know? a little sticky. Yeah, and services. A little, and... little smelly. He's not yeah. so non-stick, you know. Stuff will stuff will cling to him. Oh uh, you know, he's. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, I did want to say, uh, Nick. Uh, I decided to spend that. Uh, oh, I didn't give you a page. Uh, drive um point or i forget the term they use for it i'm I'm gonna clear the mire something is hunting you i think that that makes a lot of sense um you i think you can use downtime to also clear mires with recovery maybe um okay potentially depending on what you engage in and what's available but um I think that that's really applicable, especially now that you've gotten here. I think one other thing that you all learn is that a lot of the um, you saw the the fla- the red flags being strewn across a couple of the um, the docks. Uh, those are the like deep water docks, and you all are at a shallow water dock. Oh, um, meaning that it, the. Uh, hmm. They're worried that the the Leviathan that's been stalking this area and attacking a lot of ships could attack ships in the deep sea harbor. But the shallow harbor is at least a bit safer, question mark. At least that's what they hope. And that is, uh, I think one of the dock workers makes a a big point of like reciting this like, disclaimer that like uh, you know this is at your own risk we're not responsible if your ship gets stolen <laughs> by a leviathan <laughs> that's been targeting ships if your ship is eaten by a leviathan please contact your yeah. insurance agent <laughs> <laughs> we're happy to provide a word bearer to send word to your insurance agency <laughs> If they're not here at Ladle's Rest. <laughs> All right. Well, we will be back next week, I believe. I, I actually need to get back in the habit of asking you all if next week is going to work. But uh, we'll plan on being here and seeing you all next time um, here on Fable Table. Thank you all for joining us. We hope you had a blast. Um, mm-hmm. If you enjoyed the stream, feel free to support us on my copy page which the bot uh, continuously links every couple. Oh, it only linked it once. Thank you, Coffee Stream Bot. Um, <laughs> if you are interested in yeah, looking, welcome. thank you. Uh, if you're interested in looking at this Google Doc that we use, our, our virtual play space, you can just type exclamation S3 in the chat and it'll bring up a little URL to take you to that. Or you can DM me on Discord if you just want me to send you the link directly and you don't trust internet links um yeah okay we uh are out of here we'll catch you next time bye